Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Eric Sorensen. I'm a neurophysiologist in the Department of Neurology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and I'm going to be discussing the electromyography test, also known as an EMG. Uh, the electromyography test, or the EMG, is a test of the muscles and the nerves and their performance and function. And it's a way of testing for certain problems of the peripheral nervous system, uh, including uh, peripheral neuropathies, muscle disorders, muscle problems, uh, and, uh, and muscular dystrophies. Uh, we perform this test in our lab, which is located in the, on the Gonda building on the eighth floor. And uh, it's an outpatient laboratory where we have uh, 14 rooms where these procedures are performed uh, on a daily basis. So most people get this test when their referring physician or their, their treating physician is concerned about a problem with uh, the peripheral nerves or their muscles. And in particular, some of the common reasons why we do this test are someone, uh, if a physician is concerned about carpal tunnel syndrome or a herniated disc in the back or the neck pinching one of the nerves causing a sciatica or a radiculopathy in the arm or in the leg. Those are probably the most common uh, referrals that we get to the lab. Uh, the other conditions that we look for and assess for are peripheral neuropathies that are very common in people, for example, who are diabetic. Um, and there are other reasons for peripheral neuropathy. So there's really no preparation before the test is performed. We don't have to have people fasting or uh, withholding any kind of medications unless they're specifically instructed to by their physicians. So this is a test. We do give everybody an exam, a little a booklet to read about the examination before they come in to have it done. So they have a little idea of what we're going to do. Um, referring physicians are sometimes reticent to discuss this test in a great deal, a great amount of detail with patients. Um, it is a test that does involve some discomfort. We actually administer electrical impulses to the nerves and make them twitch which is the patients will feel as a small electrical shock to their nerves and they will notice that their muscles will jerk when they do that and that's a little startling so we warn them that that's going to happen and if we warn them uh, and if people know it's going to happen it makes it more tolerable. Um, and then the second part of the test is a small pin that we placed into the muscle to record from the muscle activity so that involves a little discomfort as well but it's very fast and it's very brief. Um, and most people tolerate the test without any uh, significant discomfort. And afterwards, there may be some minor bruising, but it's really quite well tolerated. So after the information is obtained from the, the, uh, the two parts of the study, those are reviewed and compared to normative data we have from other people of similar age, size, and gender. And once we have uh, that data, uh, once we have that analyzed, we, we put it, the two parts together and form a summary and an interpretation uh, that we then provide to the referring physician. Um, and that takes, uh, it's about an hour or so after we complete the test that we have all that done and the report's ready available for the referring physician in the electronic chart. The results are communicated to the patients through their referring physicians. As this is a diagnostic test that we do, it has to be taken into context with their other testing. For example, their MRI scans uh, and other blood work that they may be obtaining. And this really is just one of the puzzle pieces that are required, uh, that their referring physicians require to order to make a final conclusion. And so we leave that determination up to the referring physician and let them discuss uh, all the results of all their tests and composite with the, with the patients as they come back for their summary visits. So the interactions with the referring physicians from outside the institution are all referred to the referring physician. So they take care of the correspondence, passing on the information of this test as long as what, and as well as what other, t other tests the uh, uh, physician may be arranging uh, to the local physicians. One of the things that's unique uh, to Mayo is the sense that in our EMG lab, we try very hard to have um, different physicians who do the uh, clinical, clinical evaluation on the floor, uh, the different physicians are performing the EMG testing in the lab. And that's a mechanism of getting additional opinions and you're getting a, more people looking at, the, looking at the, the whole picture for the patient and giving us a, a summary of the, um, uh, uh, the sort of the team approach to the, uh, solving the patient's uh, diagnostic problem. And so it's very dependent on the clinician performing the test, as well as the technicians who are involved in the test, as well as the equipment that's being used. This is not like drawing a hemoglobin. This is a test that involves a lot of different components, a lot of different parts. And we have to make a number of decisions while we're doing the test. Which nerves do we test? How many muscles do we needle? How far do we take the test? And each of those judgments requires a medical opinion on the person performing the exam, how much they want to do. And so one of the, I think one of the really strong benefits that we have here is one, we have uh, a very busy lab, so we have a tremendous amount of clinical experience. We do a th roughly a thousand studies a month in our lab, which is far busier than any other lab. And um, that gives us a huge amount of volume and a lot of experience. And add that to the experience of our technicians and the people involved in the test and uh, that this is a teaching center where we're always involved in academic pursuits. 
Um, that gives us a unique perspective on patients and our ability to perform this examination. I think our lab services are second to none in the world for the, providing this kind of services. That we have uh, really the state-of-the-art neurophysiology centers. So another benefit that we have here at Mayo is given the amount of experience that we have with our clinicians and our technicians is that we oftentimes can tailor the study in a much more specific way for the patient so it's far less uh, painful and with much less discomfort than what they may have experienced with previous tests with people of, under, under the guidance of people who are less, uh, less experienced and don't do nearly as many of these studies as we do.